Well, last week we told you about CNBC's landmark predictive study using game theory methodology to try and chart the trajectory of the, qu of the quad. Ted Camp is, of course, our editor over at CNBC.com and is here to tell us more about what the study had to say about the relationship of China with those quad nations. Hey again, Ted. Hey, thanks a lot, Matthew. So, yes, we applied game, or we asked game theorists to make uh, several predictions about the quad nations, but their model also served up, as you alluded to, predictions on other countries in the region, including China itself. And with regard to China, what it found is factions. The model said that there are individuals within the Beijing government, specifically in its foreign ministry and its military, who will favor a more friendly approach to the quad, while the top of China's Politburo, kind of on the other side of things, will want uh, to continue a more kind of nationalistic, hawkish posture toward the Quad. And it's fascinating, Ted. I've really enjoyed uh, your deep dive into all of this because I understand that the game theory's prediction on China was also a little contentious. You've been speaking to some experts about this. What are they saying? Yeah, you're right about that, uh, Dan, as you know, the idea of there being factions within the leadership in Beijing is uh, uh, very counterintuitive. It's counter to everything that we think we know about how the government operates in China. And there were policy experts, including some who helped build the game theory model itself, who said the idea of Beijing factionalism just doesn't resonate with them. Uh, Xi, Xi Jinping, these experts said, is just too powerful for meaningful division to arise. But it's worth pointing out that the model did not predict that these more dovish elements would actually prevail. It, it said that she will lean more toward the hawks in that uh, internal debate.